Hello, welcome to Midweek. My name is Isaiah Dressel, and I am the fourth and fifth grade director here at Salem First Baptist. In this video, you're going to hear from Jonathan, who works with middle schoolers, and Caleb, who works with high schoolers. We had the opportunities these last couple of weeks to take your kids on a few different retreats. This last Friday and Saturday, I had the fourth and fifth graders for 24 hours, and it was just awesome. We had opportunities to play games, uh, and even to see the solar eclipse, it came through. When we put on our glasses, it came through and we could see the sun starting to be covered up by the moon. And that was just awesome. The kids kind of remembered the one back from a few years ago, but this one, they're older and they're able to enjoy it a lot more. Josh Thorpe led worship on this retreat. It was just cool to see the kids realize who God is and get engaged in worship and get excited about it. That was one of my highlights from the retreat. Jonathan brought the message. He he talked about owning your faith and how your relationship with God is your own. It's, it's not the same as your parents. It's not the same as others. And how you need to develop that relationship just like any other relationship. And you need to put in time. We encourage them to do things like reading your Bible and praying and just spending time with God. At the end of the week, the kids shared what they learned and a lot of them really did learn how their faith is not like their parents. It's not like their friends. They need, it's unique and they need to put in time. And so that was just awesome to watch. Fusion had a retreat just a couple weekends ago and man, it was so amazing. Our theme was rooted, seeing how we need to be rooted in God's love and then we need to abide in him remaining in the vine, that passage in John 15. And it was such an incredible weekend to see students really understand the magnitude of how much God loves them, of the payment that of, for their sins that he paid for them on the cross was something that we walked away Friday night with, where students really fully maybe understand for the first time that God's love was poured out on that cross, not just for the sins of the world, but personally for them. There were, there were tears being shed. Um, I know I was getting emotional because of how much God's payment in sending his only son to die on the cross really meant for me personally, but also for these kids. And that just launched into the rest of the weekend where we saw kids really understand what it means to abide and remain connected to God and how that's not just a giving God your church life or some of your friendships, but it's allowing God to work in the lives of, in the areas of your life, in every area of your life. You are inviting him into your sports, private school, home school, your, your friends at school, your friends at church, your free time, even sleep of how we can give God those areas of our life. And it was something where students walked away understanding that abiding in Christ is not something that they just do in the areas where they choose, but abiding is something that they do in every area of their life. And then from there, there should be, fr there should be fruit that is produced. And so we looked at how sometimes we want God to produce certain fruits in our life, but he's trying to give us something different. We might want joy, but he's giving us patience. We might want self-control, but he just wants us to sit and rest in his love. And students walked away understanding more and more of how much they one need to abide, but how that the fruit that is produced in their life is from God and not something that we produce on our own. So that's kind of the highlights of the messages. The messages, the theme of the weekend it was so incredible. And I think we saw students walk away with a closer relationship with God because of it. But we also had fun. We played games. We went on the zip line. We played Smash Face. We did the rock wall. And we just hung out and lived life together. And that's why I love retreats. It's a time where we can remove distractions and just build relationships and community with one another. My favorite thing that I saw, though, during our free time was we had a, a couple of our eighth graders make it a, a point to go and interact and have one-on-ones with sixth and seventh graders. They asked me, and I can't believe they asked me to do this. They said, JP, can we go and like just talk to the sixth and seventh graders? And I was like, well, of course you can. They're like, no, like have one-on-one -on -one conversations about what they're learning this weekend and about where their relationship is with God and just get to know them on a personal level. This has never been a question I've been asked by eighth grade students ever in my life. And we had three students go around and just interacting with these sixth and seventh graders in a personal ways, getting to know them. And then they're coming back to me with smiles on their faces about how they are getting to know and leading the younger uh, classes of fusion. This was just one of those highlights where 
I, I didn't have it planned. It wasn't something that I scheduled, but it was something that God is like, I'm going to do this through the students' lives this weekend. I can't wait to see how God works and stirs all these things that he did over this past weekend to change uh, your kids' life, to change our students' lives, to change fusion, but more importantly, to change the world. This weekend, our high schoolers had the opportunity to go to the reality conference called Man or Maker, put on by Stand to Reason. And it was an incredible weekend. Many of you have been praying for us. You gave money to help students go. And let me tell you, it was well worth the effort and energy to, to get us to Bellevue, Washington and the, the adventure it took. We had some vehicle problems. We had um, figured out where we were staying, but it all came together last minute. And it was so clear to see God uh, God's hand in making everything come together at just the right time. He's been challenging me personally with trusting him this year. And he, and this is one of those examples. I've just seen him work. And it, there's so many stories coming out of this weekend um, that I'm excited to share them with you. So um, this conference is the first time we've gone. Where they had five sessions where we we're all there with 1,500 other young people. And then they had the opportunity to go to two breakout sessions and choose from a lot of amazing topics that just deal with a lot of the issues our young high schoolers are facing. They went to things like transgenderism, truth and compassion. And each of these, uh, holy sexuality, uh, don't deconstruct your faith, do this instead. Uh, what's the truth about suicide? Topic after topic uh, where they did an amazing job of of sharing truth in a way, gently sharing truth, um, that gave them just a framework, a groundwork to begin having conversations where it wasn't, um, where they're basing it off feelings or things they've heard, but they had truth and they've had logic, great ways of thinking and how to say things that um, help them dialogue with people and show them compassion and do it in a way that draws them into the church and not in a way that is pushing young people away because we see that. We see young people leaving the church and I think our students are set to stick around and draw people in with them as they move to young adults and everything they do. Uh, one, of our, one of my leaders, um, they had a conversation with a student late on Saturday night and um, they were just telling me that this student had spent a few years just going through the motions and it was at this conference that they kind of had the aha moment of, you know what, this is, I, I need to take this for me and it's my time to be real about my faith and know the answers and say that man i have purpose god has design for me and so that's just one of many and i hope to, to share more of the stories if you ask me or any of my team um, the personal takeaways have been great um, greg kokel he's the founder of standard reason and i went to their parent and leader seminar at least part of it because then i had to step out to take care of our broken bus but one thing he shared is that Amidst the confusion, the church does not have to be confused. And so often we let some of these cultural issues kind of make us not know which way is up, but reminding us that we have the gospel, we have the truth, and even though people are confused, we don't have to be. And that was a simple reminder. Um, another one for me is uh, he, um, Christopher Yuan, which has an incredible testimony, and I could listen to him speak all day long. But one thing he challenged us was to be the call to holiness and what that looks like. And I think for, uh, even for our parents, if you have a parent or if you're a grandparent, sometimes we get kind of drawn into this thought that we have to, um, we need to produce godly kids. And that's our calling to make perfect kids or those that are gonna stay in the church. But our calling as parents, as grandparents, as adults, we need to be godly adults, godly parents, godly grandparents, and that is what's gonna keep our kids in the church. That's what's gonna make this next generation be those that reach our culture, that, are, that redeem our culture. And so that's my challenge to you. If you have kids or grandkids, live a godly life. Draw them in and show them what it looks like to have godly priorities, to go to church, to serve, to be a part of community, and to love people well. So thank you so much. If you gave financially, if you prayed for us, it was an incredible weekend. I already trying to make plans to make us go back next year. Um, a few reminders this weekend, we have baptism service. And again, celebrating those who are taking the step of faith to, to say yes and let everyone know. So that's gonna be a great part of our worship service. And then priority one is coming. That is October 28th and 29th. And it's all about Bible translation, something we hear about, but it's gonna be really fun to, to explore what that actually looks like, especially as, as times change and as, uh, as the gospel spreads, 
we're going to know where are we at and what's the need and how do we engage on that here in Salem, Oregon. So look forward to uh, priority one. Be here this weekend for baptisms. Thank you for watching.